Hello everybody, my name is Michael and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks interesting to you, please carry on and watch the video. And also, just one more thing before we go. Please, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with our young black dragon here. Of course what we need to be doing is painting it black. And since we're using a Nolzars Marvelous Miniature, they already come pre-primed, so we don't even have to worry about priming in this step. So we can move straight on with the black, and what we're going to do is cover all of the areas where the scales naturally are, and just avoiding the webbing between the areas of the wing. So giving this a good overall coverage, and as well as that, we're also not going to be doing any of the belly scales as well. We're going to be leaving them alone too. So giving it a nice, good overall coverage, and I'm using Abandoned Black here, but any black's going to do with what you want to do here because we want to set the uh, base color here if you want to even speed up the step even faster you want to uh, just go in with a black prime and that'll save you a bit of time in the step as well so up to you if you want to spray prime it in black or you want to come in here and just get straight into the thing from opening up the packet like I have here and that's just applying the black base coat then once we have that black base coat complete what we're going to do is come in with a very dark gray very nearly black and this here is a black gray uh, totally up to you if you want to do this step here as you can see it's not very visible on camera a little bit more visible in uh, real life when if you see this thing in person when you're painting this on i thought it would be a little bit more visible on camera but it sort of blends in there but uh, it's just coming in with a very very dark gray you might want to go just slightly one step lighter here and I, as you can see I'm dry brushing it on really catching all those high points into the musculature as well as all those scales then once we're given that a dry brush what we're going to do now is come in with some dark tone and this here is a wash so you could use known oil as well for this totally up to you what to do here and I've got a nice big brush to give it a good coverage over it I'm going to be applying over it as well as you can see in a nice thick layer now you might think this is a little bit strange since we've just used two layers of basically black to uh, paint over this and then we're going over with a black wash uh, like I said it's a little bit hard to see on camera there is actually a distinctive difference and as well as this is the reason why I went with the abandoned black uh, because it's a quite a light black compared to a lot of the other blacks I have like army painter and Vallejo blacks are a lot darker than abandoned black so I started off with that slightly lighter base coat in the black so I could come in with a wash and get into those nooks and cranny areas but like I said totally up to you if you want to do this step or not it might seem a little bit pointless especially if you've only got a few blacks so just coming in and giving it a nice wash then once we have that wash completely dry what we're going to do now is come on with some basalt gray now this is a lot lighter gray this is probably going to look super gray on camera since everything I've done is so very dark and black uh, and you couldn't see the differentiations in the color beforehand uh, but hopefully you can see at least a little bit of on camera now but you can definitely notice it here when I'm applying this basalt grey that it's quite light but still uh, goes within the realm of blacks and we're going to come in and highlight all the areas I'm going to come in and pick out all these little sort of um, protruding parts on the body of the miniature as well as that I'm going to come in and pick out each individual scale this is going to be a nice tedious process here so up to you if you want to do this but if you really want to make that miniature pop you want to come in here and do this so it's also going to help you practice with a lot of brush control too so don't be afraid to spend a little bit of time here to really make that miniature look awesome Then once we have that complete we've done the main black part of our black dragon so now we're going to come in with the under scales and i'm going to be using desert yellow to do this and as you can see it's going to immediately come as a striking contrast since we've got such dark colors on there and like i wanted to do is i wanted to give it some uh, visual interest and pop and not just make it completely black all over with some gray scales here and there i want to give it some visual interest as well as that i'm also following uh, the as, a sort, as sort of a rough guide here uh, the official artwork and they sort of give it a uh, very bone slash uh, yellow like uh, belly scales as well so I wanted to do that there and it helps add in a nice visual interest to the piece 
to coming through and just picking out all those areas and as you can see since we've got a lot of overspill with our black hair it's going to take a couple of coats so don't be afraid to let each layer dry and come in with those other coats so you have picked out all of those areas and got that nice smooth coverage then once we have all those scales picked out what we're going to do now is come in with some pink and I'm going to be using this for the tongue of our dragon here as you can see I want to add another nice bright interesting color to the piece really help set it apart and give you something to look at all over the miniature because you know we're dealing with quite a dark color here in the black so adding in these little pops of color over the places like underneath the belly and in the mouth can really help make it so your eye goes along the piece and has something interesting to look at as you're painting it up so it's just a matter of coming in here and being very careful to pick out the parts of the tongue so now we have that tongue and mouth area all painted up, what we're going to do is come in with some khaki now. And I'm going to be using this for the bone areas of our dragon. So separating it out from the belly scales which we did in our desert sand and has that nice uh, deep sort of brownish mustardy yellow colour. And now we're coming in with khaki which is a very different colour again to separate those parts out as well. So you can of course also paint them up the exact same if you want to but like I said we're going, we want visual interest here so we want to differentiate these areas by having different colors in there and it's just a matter of going around picking out the nice big horns on the face as well as that we also want to pick out the claws of our dragon and also don't forget the little claws on his wings as well so just go around pick them all out nice carefully now it might take a couple of layers to do this since uh, a lot of these areas will be still covered in black so don't be afraid to do that too then once we have those areas picked out what we're going to do now is come in with some red wash and I'm using red tone for this and all I'm going to be doing is applying it to the mouth here we've got that nice pink tongue and I just want to uh, give that a nice uh, good coverage overall with our wash and give it some definition so you can see the ridge in the tongue there and give it a sort of dullish uh, color because I still want it to be nice pink but I don't want it to be so eye strikingly bright we need it to look semi realistic and giving a wash is going to help that then once we have that wash dry what we're going to do is come in with another wash now and I'm going to be using soft tone for this. Now a good substitute for soft tone here if you don't have it is Sarah from Sepia. It's a sepia wash as well as this army painter one here and it's just a matter of coming around and picking out all those areas with the bone uh, and giving it a nice good overall wash. As well as that too I'm also going to be applying the soft tone over the uh, scales on the belly as well. So don't forget to do that as you're going around picking out all these bony areas and you can see I'm applying it quite thick so you can get all that nice uh, detail but as as I'm going and applying it thickly as well I'm also spreading it out making sure that it gets into those nooks and crannies and making sure that it's not pooling you want to be uh, very careful about the pooling as well so don't be afraid to wick that brush up but while I'm applying it by placing a nice big blob there it's a bit on the belly area and then just bringing it down and bring it into those areas where it needs to be then once we have those areas completely dry what we're going to do now is come back in with our desert yellow and I'm just going to be applying just a little bit of deck tan to it to lighten it up and give it a, a nice highlighting color and what we're going to be doing is coming around and picking out just the bottom ridges of our scales as well as just the big uh, center line as well where the sun would sort of naturally catch for, as a reflection here and it's just a matter of well I guess not the sun catching as a natural reflection I'm adding this to sort of a nice uh, highlight to the piece and really giving it visual interest since it's underneath and we're not going to catch much sun from underneath but it's just going to give it a nice visual interest it's a matter of spending some time and going around picking out all these little plates on the belly okay so once we've got that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're just going to be grabbing the deck tan by itself and we're going to be using this to be painting up our black dragon's teeth and you can see they're sculpted in there probably a little bit hard to see with help my camera in focus so let's try to get that in focus so you can see what i'm doing there we go and you can see that i'm just coming around and picking out those teeth We've got a whole bunch of them all along there and we want to be especially careful on that bottom jaw where that uh, tongue is because it can be very easily to accidentally paint on the tongue so just practice a little bit of brush control there to pick them out then once we have those teeth picked out what we're going to do now is come in with some skeleton bone and as the name implies we're going to be using it for our bony area so this is of course the horns and the fingers or I should say the uh, claws on the edge of the wings and the actual claws itself we want to be picking out and you can see I'm just going around picking out the areas where the light would sort of be and as for the ones on the wings I'm just sort of going around and picking out the very tips giving them a nice uh, 
highlighted point on the edge. So it's just a matter of coming in, getting a rough uh, pitch on there on with your brush, and just picking those areas out. So you can see here, I'm just picking out the ends, giving them a nice highlighted point. Then once we have that complete, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be moving on to the wings. And I'm going to be using royal purple to do this. So I'm going with purple wings. Uh, the black dragon and its official artwork pretty much always just has straight black wings. And that's really boring. And I could have gone with a grey here to separate them up. I want to go with something really different. And uh, striking and eye catching. And I'm going to go with purple here. Because we want to represent sort of that poison acidy colour. I was thinking between green and and purple but I decided to land on purple it also very much is reminiscent of sort of Maleficent when she's a dragon in the original uh, Disney movie and I think that looks pretty cool so I want to come in and paint these wings up so it's just a matter of giving them all a nice good base coat of our purple here a nice deep dark purple then once we have that base layer of purple on, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some alien purple, which is an even lighter purple again. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sort of stippling in the middle of the wings uh, sections here, not just sort of avoiding the edged areas and just stippling it on, trying to add on some texture and also slightly brighten it up because it's slightly brighter than our royal purple. So it's just a matter of coming in, picking out these sections, not doing the entire thing. I'm sort of just aiming for the middle sections and sort of leaving it out like the areas that would sort of naturally catch the light. I want to sort of make these like a highlight. So just coming in and carefully stippling it in. Then once we have those areas picked out, what we're going to do now is come in with Grimoire Purple. And this was the exact same step, this time just being a little more narrower. And as you can see, it's a lot brighter and you can very much drastically see the difference in our last step here and it's just a matter of coming in and picking it out just stippling it nice and carefully and not worrying too much about how rough it looks because as you keep stippling it on and applying the pressure here it'll start to smoothen itself out eventually so just keep working at it just jabbing lightly not going too hard or rough but just giving it enough so it can slowly work itself in Then once we have those areas stippled in, what we're going to do is stipple in one more time, and this time we're going to come in with Sturge Tan to do this. Now this is a very sort of uh, pinky purple, and we're coming into just the middles again, so each time we're making these areas smaller and smaller, and I'm trying to sort of make it look like uh, representing of the light shining through the thinner areas of the wings, where it's sort of stretching out and you can have a translucent sort of effect but mainly I'm going for the nice eye poppingness of it so just coming in and going slightly smaller on each of those sections to really have that nice pop but still keeping it in that stippling motion so the texture is nice and rough and it looks uh, uneven and natural and more uh, natural like is the idea I'm trying to go for here. Then once we have all of that complete, we can now move on to a wash. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a purple tone for this. So a nice purple wash, and this is going to help tie everything together and make it look the transitions that we have sort of in our stippling areas where I've gone a little bit too hard and it's a little bit too rough and muddy. Well, this wash will hopefully sort of even it out and make it look a little bit more natural, a transitioning area. And it's just a matter of coming in, being careful. Now, when you're applying this, since we're applying it in such huge quantities, be sure to make sure that as it's drying that you're being very aware of the pooling areas because you don't want it to be pooling up too much or accidentally run onto the body of the dragon or anything like that so just pay attention to it as it's drying then once we have all that complete what we're going to do now is we're going to come in for the eyes i'm going to be using jungle green for this and this is a nice bright very bright green and this is going to really stand out on the piece because like i said we're doing our green dragon acid and in its official artwork it's represented by a nice bright green and coming in with the eyes and giving them the nice bright green i think it's going to really help separate it as well as giving this nice pop of color on the face and all over the model since we've got those nice uh, complementary colors with our purples and our blacks to really give you something to focus on on this piece and it's going to really make these eyes stand out so come in with a nice fine tip brush and pick out those eyes but with all that done we've completed so let's move on to those glamour shots and see how it came out
And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up our young black dragon from the Dungeons and Dragons range by WizKids. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video as some inspiration in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.